the Solid Signal podcast for the week of December 21st, 2015. I'll admit that uh, my first thought this week was to give you a review of Star Wars The Force Awakens because if you've been reading the Solid Signal blog, then you have some idea exactly how excited I've been about this particular film. Of course, the Star Wars saga does span most of my life, and so I have this kind of geeky attachment to it, but I'm not going to do that because I feel like even though it is Christmas week, I do feel like I should do some sort of work. I know, kind of a bummer that way. So yes, I will do that. Instead of talking about Star Wars, as I'm inclined to do, I think I'm going to talk instead about modulators. A modulator is a device which allows you to take more than one channel of content and put it on a single wire. You're surrounded by modulators. They're used for FM radio. They're used for television. They're used all over the place. And if you think way back to the younger days when you used to put your video game out on channel 3 of your television set, modulators were used there too. A modulator put the video game content on channel 3 where most likely there was no content that was coming in from the antenna. Modulator systems were used extensively in the early days of satellite to try to create little home systems and hotels, bars, restaurants, that sort of thing, to make it easy to switch from channel to channel without having multiple receivers at the television. Now keep in mind, when you're dealing with a modulator system, you still need one receiver for every channel you're going to use. So obviously if you were to try to duplicate the multi-thousand channel direct TV system exactly, you'd need a ton of receivers. You'd need thousands of them. But that's not really how a modulator system works. Most likely, if you're in a hotel that uses a modulator, they've got somewhere between 16 and 48 receivers somewhere in a rack, and that's the number of channels that you have to choose from. You're limited by that. Modulator systems have become less common in the face of things like DirecTV's residential experience package or just the what we call an L-band distribution system used often in bars where the signal actually just goes straight to receivers right at the back of the television. This is easier now. The televisions are thinner. That receivers themselves are relatively small. And it just makes it uh, easier and cheaper to implement than having to put everything in a central rack. But there are benefits to modulated systems, even today. You can build a distribution system that goes a long distance without having to string a bunch of wires. You just string a single wire, and you can use a device called a tap, which essentially turns the wiring for your DirecTV or dish receivers into something like the way that you wire holiday lights all across a single wire, just you know, one set of current going from place to place to place, and one signal that just drops into the receivers and back out again as necessary. That's oversimplifying things a little bit, but the point of a modulated system is that it is a whole lot easier to wire. Also, with a modulated system, all the equipment that you need, everything is right in one central location, which makes it easier for a technician to solve problems, provided, of course, they don't have to do with cut wires, But if there's something going on with the video signal itself, everything is in one rack, and it's easier that way. Now, when it comes to modulators, unfortunately, modulators really don't have a whole lot of place in the home anymore. People in the older DirecTV days used to use modulators to distribute the signal from one receiver to multiple rooms. After all, you could use an RF remote, and just if you're just one person going from room to room to room, it makes it easy to just watch what you want to watch, and you don't have to have a receiver in every single room. Unfortunately, modulators have become infinitely more expensive when you talk about high definition. So where a modulator for standard definition used to run you, oh, about $15, $20, now modulators for high definition will run you $600, $700 quite easily. And it has to do somewhat with the technology that's being used, somewhat with the, uh, the need for just additional chips and thought and logic, but mostly it has to do with the greed of those content providers, and I'm not going to say any of them by name, (coughs) Disney, (coughs) who 
are demanding that when you're using high definition content that you pay some sort of licensing fee if you're going to remodulate that technology. That's the real problem with using modulators for high definition. Where it used to be a relatively inexpensive process, now it's turned into an expensive one. And that can be a problem. If you want to avoid some of those content provider fees, well then what you're doing is you're trying to bypass some of this stuff, you're trying to buy stuff that can be sort of hot-wired or hacked, and I personally don't recommend that, not here on the Solid Signal podcast. Modulator systems are just not as popular as they used to be, despite the fact there are some really excellent ones. Bottom line, folks, though, is none of them is really suitable for the home. That's about it for the Solid Signal podcast. It seems like I went awfully long, awfully fast, Uh, The podcast will be back on Monday. In the meantime, I hope that everybody has a great weekend, no matter what you will be doing. I suspect that uh, most of this country will be doing exactly the same thing on Friday. But no matter who you are, no matter what you do, have a very happy, have a very safe day on Friday. And I will see you back again for the podcast on Monday or Tuesday.